I hope you enjoyed last week's episode on being an overcomer. If you missed it, please go back and listen to episode 55. Today, I want to talk about personal influence. There are four main definitions for the word influence. One, one that exerts influence. Two, the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something, or the effect itself. Three, the power or capacity of causing an effect in indirect or intangible ways. Four, the act or power of producing an effect without apparent exertion of force or direct exercise of command. Now, listen to the two main definitions for the word influencer. Number one, one who exerts influence, a person who inspires or guides the actions of others. And two, someone who affects or changes the way that other people behave. So we hear the words influence and influencer all the time. There are social media influencers who are people paid by a company to show and describe their products and services on those platforms, encouraging other people to buy them. There are marketers who do the same thing by collaborating with brands to promote products or services to their audience. People even state influencer as a career goal or as their current occupation. What I want to talk to you about today is the fact that even if you aren't marketing retail products or using social media to sway people, you have influence. You are an influencer because you have the ability to inspire or guide other people through your words or actions. The question is, what kind of influence are you having on other people? What are your words and actions telling them or teaching them? What is your life modeling? What are you encouraging people to think, say, or do? What is your life example showing people? There's always somebody watching you or listening to you, even if you are unaware. And what you do or what you say to or in front of them may cause them to act, believe, or think one way or another, depending on what you have modeled, advised, or said out loud. They are watching how you handle yourself when the checkout line in a store is moving slowly. Do you engage in negative talk with others who are impatiently waiting in that line? That type of chatter, if overheard by the cashier, could encourage someone to quit their job and give up on trying. How do you treat people in service industries, like waitressing? Do you treat that person like they're beneath you, act entitled, make multiple demands on their time and energy, and then leave without a thank you or a tip or leave a dollar tip for a huge order or a big party? You could cause that waitress to not believe that decent people exist in the world. Or imagine if that person quit out of discouragement and waitressing was paying for their schooling. When employees are talking about the boss, do you join in that conversation? Think of the consequences for you if what you said got back to your boss, or how your coworkers might perceive that you'll talk about them when they aren't around, just like you talk about the boss when he or she isn't around. When advising your friends who are upset with someone, do you join them in their anger and frustration, talking badly about the person that they're upset with? They could make up with that person and look at you funny because of all the things you said about the person they were mad with at the time. Or they could tell the person what you said and it could ruin or strain relationships. When speaking to your spouse or children about their mistakes, do you show mercy and give them the grace to make a mistake or do you pummel them with your words and with your reaction to what they did wrong? Children may walk away from that type of interaction with lifelong scars, thinking they are a failure and can never do anything right. If a person was talking about their spouse, you could end up dissolving a marriage, depending on what you say or what you advise that person to say or do. Do you teach your children that lying is bad, but tell them to tell someone who calls your house you're not home when you're standing right there, right next to them? You just taught your child it's okay to lie when you don't want to deal with someone. 
if you are a Christian? Would people be surprised to find that out? What is your reputation at your job or your church or within your family or among your friends? Are you considered the peacemaker or the troublemaker? Dependable or flaky? Honest or dishonest? Upfront or sneaky? Assertive or rude? You know, self-responsibility and acknowledging the impact of our actions and words on others is a huge part of being an adult. Adults are expected to act like adults. You have to think before you open your mouth. I call speaking without thinking vomiting at the mouth. You just let everything out with no control, no thought, or consideration of the influence or the impact of your words. You know, toddlers react without thinking and say things based on how they feel. Adults are expected to do better. The Bible says, when I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. There's a scripture that says, we'll be held accountable by God for every word that we speak. That scripture also says that by our words, we'll be justified and by our words, we'll be condemned. There's another scripture that says you will know them by their fruit. That means by your actions, by your words, by the result of or what is produced from your life. The Bible also says no good tree will bear bad fruit and A bad tree won't bear good fruit. So you have to ask yourself, is your fruit good or bad? An apple tree cannot produce pears, no matter how badly you want it to. Are you planting the type of seeds that will give you the harvest you want? You know, the fruit of the Spirit, according to the Bible, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, gentleness, and faithfulness. Does your influence on people and situations produce these results? Do you encourage peace or do you bring peace to situations? When you give advice, do you encourage people to do what is good, what is kind, what is right? Do you encourage people to have patience? You know, perfection is not the goal here, but you do have to be keenly aware of your influence on people and situations as you go through life. And you have to try to the best of your ability to be responsible with your words and your actions at all times. Because at all times, you are an influencer. Nobody signed up for the job, but we all got it. It's not a career choice or something you operate in for a given moment or occasion. It's a lifestyle. From the time you wake up until you go to bed, from the moment you're born until the day you die, your actions and your words have the potential to influence somebody to do the right thing or the wrong thing, to react out of emotions or not, to allow anger to rule the day or not, to learn how to make peace or war and so on. You have influence whether you want it, acknowledge it or not, especially if you are a Christian, because the Bible says you are a letter known and read by all men. The only God some will ever see is the Christ inside of you that should radiate out of you in tangible, teachable, practical ways that influence people to say, what must I do to be saved? How can I make your God my God? Or tell me more about this Jesus that you display so clearly and so well. How are people reading your letter? Are they saying, if this is how God causes you to act, I want no part of him. Or your God is no different than the world. Or if your God can't change you, how in the world is he going to help me? Do your words and behavior contradict and diminish your message. Do you leave church after singing praises to God and then cuss or name call when someone cuts you off in traffic on the way home from church? You know, the scripture says that blessings and curses should not come out of the same mouth. How are you using your life? How are you using your influence? When you leave this earth, will Jesus say to you, depart from me, I never knew you because your fruit is bad and your works did not come from him. Do you use your influence to do evil works instead of works inspired by 
and influenced by God. Because when we become followers of Christ, we allow him and his word to guide and influence our words and actions, which in turn influence the people around us. If the original source of influence is Jesus Christ, the fruit will always be beneficial and good for ourselves and for others. So remember, every action has a reaction and words have meaning and impact. Someone is always paying attention to you, even if you don't realize it. So take responsibility for your words and actions, but also for how your words and actions affect the people around you. I hope going forward, you will be more cognizant of the influence you have, where you have influence, and that you use it thoughtfully, prayerfully, and responsibly. Bye for now.